Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Smith. I'm a laboratory technician at the University of New Hampshire in the Harvey Lab under Dr. Elizabeth Harvey. And I'm here to talk today about using what we call FlowCan um, to do analysis on water sampling. So this is something that can be applied to a lot of different variables of research that you are doing. Mm -hmm. There we go. Not too far. So I'm just going to talk really quickly about what a flow cam is. So this is a, de a device from Yokogawa Fluid Imaging Technologies, and they essentially combine the ability to do flow cytometry, microscopy, and occasionally fluorescence. That is um, an option you do have to choose or pay off extra for. So we don't have that option, but it is something that can be really useful to your research based on what you're doing. And it essentially allows rapid imaging and character characterization of particles within a moving liquid. So it will suck your liquid down through your pipette, as you see in the middle here, goes to the flow cell, takes images and looks at everything that's within the liquid. We'll shoot out up to 40 different characteriz characterizations, including um, diameter, transparency, length, width. So depending on what you're looking for and what you're working with, it can be really valuable to generate a lot of data. So it allows for bulk, bulk water analysis uh, significantly quicker. And as you can see, kind of partially on the side there, it will, at the end, produce a whole list of different graphs that you can alter and change based on the data that you're looking for and all the images that it took from your sampling. So a lot of my presentation will include images that have actually come from water samples that we've run. We use it in general to do weekly or regular, regular sampling. So we generally sample at three locations, Jackson Estuary Lab, the Coastal Marine Lab, and then we receive a Hampton sample from New Hampshire Department of Environmental Safety. And this allows us to determine the composition of phytoplankton and zooplankton communities so we can run it through, see who is there, who we expect to be there, who maybe is not there. It also allows us to track changes over a short period of time. So if there's any sort of special events, any sort of species that may be in flux, we can see that as well. And it actually is allowing us to generate a longer time series of populations that are in the area. So we have a really strong time series starting in 2021. We do have results from before then as well but it will essentially allow us to look at seasonality changes over a long period of time. And then it's useful in identifying uncommon occurrences or anomalies. I'll talk a little bit about that going forward. And that's super useful when it comes to harmful, harmful algal bloom species. So just to kind of give an example of how we use this data, this is tracking over a year of chlorophyll that we saw in two locations. And we saw three kind of unique spikes. Using the flow cam, we can pair the data that we have about chlorophyll with the data about species information. And we can determine that there were major culprits in these um, spikes were either rhizosolenia or skeletonema. So it gives us a really grounds on appearance of who may be causing chlorophyll increases. So it can also be super useful in event response. So we used it when we had the novel expansive bloom in the summer of 2023 with trifos, which is a non-toxic cosmopolitan dinoflagellate. So from May to August, the initiation to demise of this big bloom we were able to follow it, able to get abundances of the actual number of species that we were potentially seeing. And then we were able to pair this with buoy and satellite data that were capturing bulk chlorophyll, but not able to say who was producing what. So, and we could additionally observe physiological changes. So you can see down on the bottom, you have three nice, lovely living guys. And then right next to it, you have a very sad dead guy. So we were able to track when we would reach our peak, which was causing these dirty brown water samples, clogging up filters for people. And we could see when we started to visualize more death than we were seeing life. Just to get into some other uses, because there are a lot of other uses that you can use this machine for. So you can ground truth satellite retrieval pair it with other results to get a really strong data set. You can use it to do microplastics and cyanobacteria research as well. That does require either the purchase of a laser or the flow cam cyano. And then you can do sediment sampling, which will let you look at particle size distribution or grain size. You can use it for a lot of different data. Um, it can travel to at sea. It's about the size of a regular um, desktop computer. So it travels decently well. And it can also be used for terrestrial work, which isn't something I'm as familiar with, but we did have someone in our lab who used it to look at the larvae of parasitic wasps and blueberries. So that's some of the images you see here. And then I also have some tardigrade images just because I really love them. <laughs> so. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them.